right everybody welcome to cocktails and courageous conversations one of my favorite activities in the world this is where we get together in the bar have a little cocktail or a mocktail or a glass of water or a cup of coffee and talk about stuff that is important and tonight uh, I have one of my favorite people because I've worked with you uh, way back we worked together for many years in the same company that uh, I have the most love and respect for and one of the things that I find uh, so inspiring and important is to shine a light on other people and particularly women and I know Alien that you are very successful in your work in general and right now you have also just uh, published a book about mistakes one of my favorite topics so I just want to say that I love that you are here I love that we're talking about this I know we're speaking English <laughs> although we normally speak Swedish with each other and so just want to say on behalf of myself and people who are watching this warmly welcome to the bar <laughs> oh thank you so much <laughs> i'm so it's... so glad to be here in the bar with you in the bar in the bar so it's just you and me having a cocktail and together with uh, lots of beautiful people and so uh, whenever you see me guys looking down it's because i am uh, monitoring the the group at the same time so this is this is being live stream inside our impact facebook group so people if you're with us now or when you are watching the recording send us a heart send us a hello tell us where you are where you are sitting right now so that we so that we feel that you are in the bar together with us. And so, Elin, I see that there's uh, quite a few people here already. Would you mind uh, introducing yourself to this lovely group of people? Of course. Um, I'm so, as I said, I'm so happy to be here. Um, my name is Elin Westlander, and I am a clinical psychologist since 20 years back. And uh, most of my uh, work I've done at Psycholog Partners, the company where you and me met and we worked, had a lovely time working together with trainings and, and workshops and, and stuff like that. It was uh, a wonderful time learning ACT from you and, and our colleagues. Wonderful. And I did most of my work at Psycholog Partners when uh, living in Stockholm. Um, but three years ago, I moved together with my family up north in Sweden uh, to Umeå and I started my private practice. So that's where I'm right now uh, in my office uh, where I meet, uh, I, I do supervision throughout Sweden on like uh, psychologists and psychotherapists throughout Sweden uh, on distant supervision. And uh, when I moved, I also got some extra time since I, I, I uh, live and work at the same place and do everything on the computer uh, I got some spare time and I realized that I love to write and I love to interview people and uh, that's what made me write this book and yeah. I guess this is the reason I'm here so I'm so happy to be here and to be able to talk about mistakes with you Rick. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for, uh, and I see there are hearts already. There are hearts and thumbs up here for us. So just know that you are being supported and held by this beautiful community. One of the things that you and I spoke about uh, before we, we, we started, we put on the camera is that, um, so in my humble opinion, I think talking about mistakes is so important and so relevant, relevant. And also, um, you mentioned that you were portrayed in a newspaper, maybe in a way <laughs> that you, you felt like was a bit, you know, uh, I'll leave you to talk about that if you want to. But, and I also said that, uh, I, I looked in my notes and I have a workshop called the, the top 10 mistakes you don't want to make as an act therapist that I have been giving in various contexts that has been pretty popular. And for, 
for a t for you know quite a while I was known as the person who who does these mistakes, <laughs> which was <laughs> quite unfortunate. So there's something about I think when a practitioner shows up and talks about making mistakes, uh, not everybody sees that as brave and vulnerable. Some people interpret it as you know why are you doing that? Aren't aren't you not supposed to be uh, perfect or expert or something like that? So I just wanted to emphasize how cool and brave and vulnerable I think it is that you are now in Sweden, you know, talking about this and, and inviting people to talk about this. I know you invited uh, colleagues to, to, to uh, contribute to this book. So, you know, a huge hug uh, and huge respect from me to you because I think this is so important to talk about. And it's hard, isn't it? Because mm. um, I think one of the things that we often do is beat ourselves up because we do make mistakes. Of, of course we do make mistakes, but it's hard to talk about because we're mm. supposed to be experts and because we, we should know better. So I just mm. wanted to to say that, <laughs> that I find this su such an important topic. Um, so Elin, I wanted to tell you some of the mistakes that came. I'm, I want to hear all about your book and and uh, mm -hmm. and some of the some of the mistakes that you put in there. And I just wanted to pinpoint some of the. Uh, I asked in the Facebook group, like, what are mistakes that you typically make, and what you know have what have you learned from them? And there are so many uh, different uh, uh, comments in here. Uh, I just I wanted to show come down to this one that I love. I love them all. I just want to <laughs> highlight a few of them. Vilma, our good friend Vilma, she says, I sometimes rush into problem solving mode too early, trying too hard to be helpful. I'm still learning and have to be conscious not to take away the power from clients by striving to be a good therapist. And people are just loving this comment and recognizing this. So do you, so I, it, do you do you recognize this as well like the rushing into problem solving trying to fix the client uh, and wanting to be a good therapist yeah all the time <laughs> almost <laughs> uh no i think that's a really common mistake that i do and and a lot of us do uh because we we want to help and we want to do it efficiently and we want we maybe have all these ideas what to do and and Maybe sometimes we don't get really the, the, the reaction from the client, uh, seeing the action from the client. So we, we start to act for them, uh, exactly. doing all, all the things that we think uh, this could help you. We know that this can help you and we really want it. So we rush into, um, we want to give results quickly. And I guess a lot of clients also think that they should get results quickly so they can be a part of it as well. So yes, a common mistake, definitely. Common mistake. Thank you, Vilma, Vilma, for shining a light on this one. I really like that. So Elin, um, there are more here. I'm going to highlight these later. Would you mind like telling us some of the mistakes that you have written about in your precious book and a beautiful book as well i oh, loving the book. thank you <laughs> thank you uh yeah I, I i did interview 15 psychotherapists uh, that really generously gave me their mistakes and and so I, there's a lot of authentic mistakes in the book uh, with where they also reflect on on what happened why did it happen what would you have done if you knew the outcome of the situation and, and things like that and how did you feel when it happened and so on um and that's it's mistakes like you, you lose your professional role uh maybe we have someone that that uh, after a theater saw a client, didn't realize it was a client and uh, hugged the person and afterwards it realized, oh, in the middle of the hug realized, oh, this is a client. I'm not supposed to do this. Uh, this is not okay. So th that's one type and, and others that, that missed to, to answer a phone and, and the client uh, tried to, to kill themselves. So it's the whole range of really uh, maybe minor mistakes and bigger mistakes uh, and a lot of my own mistakes I, I have in oh. there so so a lot of uh, common smaller mistakes but also one of the the hardest to to talk about and 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 tell so um 
I can give you a lot of examples. Um, but one one example is the, the hard one where where I actually fell asleep during a, a session uh, in the beginning of my career. I did oh, no. I didn't sleep enough that night uh, before the night before, and I actually woke up and realized I'm in the I'm in the middle of a session. Have I slept yeah. one second or yeah. thirty seconds? I, I don't know. And oh. The fear <laughs> yeah. uh, I felt in that second, uh, and, and I, in the book I write about what happened next and what, how did I manage that? What did I do to handle that situation? Because that's of course a big thing in 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 this topic. What do you do when you realize that you made a mistake? When you when you have maybe a client telling you that this is a mistake or this isn't good for me. What did you do when you woke up? Uh, it, in that second, I, I didn't do anything else than listen to the client uh, that was continuing talking uh, their story. And um, I, I just, I, of course, I was all in my head and in my, in my chest feeling anxiety and, and, and stress. And, and I didn't know what to do, but I just let the session uh, end um, in, in like a regular manner and then I thought about it a lot uh, and I I thought that I need to to do something about this because it, it's not okay I, I, I'm not supposed to sleep during this session uh, so I called the client I think it was the day after maybe two days after I called the client and, and uh, just told um, her that this happened. I don't know if you noticed, but of course you're not supposed to pay for this. And I'm so, so, so sorry. And I, I, I don't know. I just want you to know that, that I know it happened. Uh, and uh, she didn't, uh, she hadn't uh, noticed. So I guess it maybe was one second or something. Um, but I think she almost thanked me for for calling and 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 was okay with it. And I, I after the session after I uh, I asked if she had any questions or if she wanted to to uh, talk about it. But she was fine with it actually. So yeah. so, but I guess another person maybe it would have been a, a bigger thing, uh, a yeah. bigger problem. But in this case, I I, I don't think it it. Um, made that big uh, it, it wasn't that problematic for this client but it was for me really and it was for you that's that's because my yes. question would be like what were you telling yourself so she didn't mind but what were you telling yourself in that <laughs> yes. how how period? you ask, how can you do this this is yeah. so unprofessional it's not something that you know you cannot do that. I, I, I couldn't really believe it happened because mm. I'm actually, uh, and I guess that's one of the reasons I've written this book. I, I'm one of the many uh, therapists not wanting to do mistakes, really eager to, to do everything right and correct and never do mistakes. So this wasn't like me. I, I couldn't really, I couldn't really relate to this happening and, and, uh, uh, so I I beat myself up about it a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's so I I I would imagine that happened for you. I I know I do that uh, a lot. And so I wanted just to pinpoint one of Marie Marie, our good friend from Denmark, says my biggest mistake was to spend so many years being afraid to make mistakes. <laughs> I learned to forgive myself for making them and to focus on more important matters. But I think actually that's one of the things I often talk about when I talk about this topic is I think one of our big mistakes as practitioners is uh, being so afraid to make mistakes, being um, uh, regardless of gender ident identification. But tonight we can talk about being good girls, right? Being mm. uh, and maybe being people pleasers, etc. But it's important uh, to be, you know, perfect or the expert and etc. So it can be really hard when we do make a mistake or when we think <laughs> we make a we made a mistake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not make so being so afraid to make mistakes, I think is actually true is such a big mistake as, as well, because then you are more focused on not making a mistake 
maybe then uh, to focus on your client or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that one. Um, I, I, you know, my heart goes out to you. My first thought was, you clearly you needed a nap. Like, <laughs> Clearly, yeah. you know, and I get that, you know, timing could have been better or something like that. Cool. But, but, you know, your body just shut down, right? And clearly you needed a little nap and, you know. So... And Ricky, you know, I did never think of like that. That, that, oh. mind, that, that, that thought never crossed my mind. It oh. was all about, no, you're not supposed to do that. So oh. that was a loving thought. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I, I, I do. So it, in tra in trainings, when I do trainings, I'm guessing you've had this too. That sometimes during like maybe longer visualizations or something like that, people fall asleep, and I don't because I'm instructing it. So, but people will fall asleep, and they come out of it, and they're like beating themselves up for falling asleep. And my response is always like clearly you needed this you just need and and again yeah timing might have been a bit off but you know uh you needed a little rest and so you you got it so mm -hmm. it's fine um I, I i have one here um oh this is a good one from our friend louisa from denmark um here's one where she said she stopped therapy with a client because he didn't seem motivated although he claimed to be and then he later got di diagnosed with autism, but at that time she didn't know better. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is such a beautiful share as well. And I just mm -hmm. want to say that for you too, my, my heart goes out to you, Louisa, that it sounds like Louisa was so frustrated that the client didn't pro progress or uh, mm -hmm. the client didn't move along. And so she ended it and later found out that might have been a pretty good reason for that. So just mm -hmm. wanted to acknowledge that and, and thank you all for sharing uh, things that are so vulnerable. Our good friend Matthias uh, is from, from Sweden, talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> Ooh, do you, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah. So would you want to share one another one from your book? Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I'm just gonna say to, like to everybody here. I know you're having wine. You're having very white wine. You're having yeah, the kind but, of wine, yes. the, the kind of the kind of wine that we call water. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, tonight Shit. I am having a glass of red wine in this bar. We can have everything. Like wherever you are, you can have water, coffee. You can have anything. Cheers, folks. Cheers. So, what's one so, more? Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking about uh, the the one that that um, not uh, being so afraid of making mistakes uh, can be a big mistake in itself, and I guess that was one of the reasons for me writing this book, uh, mm -hmm. realizing that that my my uh, fear of making mistakes has been shadowing. Uh, yeah. my knowledge about doing what, what's the right CBT to do and what's the right act to do, uh, then I need to do it and I need to do it like Ricky showed it in, in the workshop or, or like uh, Kelly Wilson do it or, or someone else. Um, and, and starting to, to think about that being too much up in my head. And I have one, one, one of my most um, common mistakes is mixing up names uh, maybe naming a person wrongly. Yeah? So I say, say the wrong name uh, to a client. And, and that happened a couple of times. And then I got so afraid of doing it uh, because it, it isn't, doesn't feel good. Uh, so I, I started to, I stopped using the names in, in, the, in the sessions because I got afraid of maybe if I, if, is it, is it Anna or is it Hannah? I, I got all up in my head. Well, is it Anna or is it Hannah? And, and then I didn't say the name at all. Uh, and, and that's okay to, to do the therapy without saying the name, but but using the name, it's, it's, it's a relational thing. It's, it's something that makes you connect. And, and uh, I got a little bit more distant being up in my head, uh, but too afraid to use the wrong name. I think it would have been better to, to use the names, get corrected and then use the right name. Um, but for a long time, I didn't. I, I got afraid of using names. And um, so, so that's one of my common mistakes where I think that the frightness of 
doing the mistake became an even bigger mistake. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. that's an example. I love that you're saying this. I always, I, 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 I talk about this either like you are full of mind or you are mindful. And so mm. I see this so many in myself and I see it with the people I supervise and the people I train that we're so busy thinking like, again, what would somebody else do? Am I doing it right? Am I saying the right name? Am I, am I hurting the person? Am I talking too much? Am I talking too little? Do I sound smart? Like there's mm. so much going on. What do I do next? How do I respond to that? Mm. And so often we are so caught up in our heads as you said that we're distant and we don't that we miss out on what is right in front of us oh mm. uh, i think this is i i agree i think this is one of the very 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 common mistakes mm. um just wanted to see here oh here's one um and i'm just gonna say i find it a little funny and it's not funny but i know the person who wrote this and i my heart goes out to you but i and i can it's a horrible situation i'm gonna say what it is but, but I just like, if I laugh, I'm sorry. It's because, you know, in this in this little bar, I think we can laugh at it. It's horrible, but we can laugh at it. So Mats, our good friend Mats, also from Sweden, he said that he had a phone call with a client and he was, uh, you know, obviously frustrated with the client. I'm just going to uh, mm-hmm. sum up the comment. And, um, and he, so he spoke to the client. He was very frustrated and he thought he'd hung up, but he didn't. And so he started talking about the client to his colleague and um, and obviously he's not very proud of himself. And he said, um, make sure the phone is turned off after a call and do act when you do act and then keep fighting the good fight. And I'm sorry, Matt, for laughing. It's I'm not laughing uh, at you. I'm laughing uh, kind of because it's a little, a little bit of humoristic situation. We don't want to do this. And I just my heart goes out to you. And thank you so much for sharing. But this happens, right? This happens. Yeah. And of course, we get frustrated with clients as we get frustrated with everybody, with ourselves, with our families, with our relationships and so forth and of course this is very very unfortunate and if you were here Matt I would have asked you like how did you handle this like it would be so interesting to hear what happened after this but I hope when when people are hearing these mistakes that you feel uh, invited to share and to and know that you're not alone and know that you're not uh, there's nothing wrong with you we all make mistakes and talking about them uh, makes it less shameful. Um, oh, there are so many lovely comments here. I wanted to, so uh, just when I look down, it's because I'm checking <laughs> comments and seeing that I- But can, can, I, can I give another example? I, I yes, was thinking please about give an example. another example. Yeah, uh, that, that actually, because I, I thank you so much, uh, Mats, for, for that. Uh, of course, it must, must have felt awful when it happened uh and but sometimes and i don't know how what happened next but uh i have an example from from one of my uh, interview persons in in the book that i really really love um but it was a a therapist uh doing uh, dbt and in dbt dialectic behavior therapy uh they um film all the sessions so in this session with the client uh, the therapist um, says something, it just blurts something out that is insensitive uh, and, and uh, not good to use with this client and, and regret it right away. And said, oh, sorry, oh, that must, 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 must have been the most stupid thing I ever said. I, I wish I could just put it back, something like that. Um, the client get get upset, but not uh, like uh, running away, but 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 a little angry. Uh, they end the session, and the client looks at the, the video um, and comes back the ne- the next uh, the next time, and is really happy about looking at the video and thinking it, it was a really good video. And and the therapist thinks that oh, I wish I, I wonder what I did, what, what kind of good uh, thing did I do last time. And after a while, the, the client tells that, that it was this, this um, dumb comment, this insensitive comment, and, and seeing the therapist doing something um, not good, doing something, uh, doing a mistake, and being not perfect. That was healing for the client to see that you are also a person. You do not do everything perfect. And, and this was a client with a lot of, lot of perfectionism. 
so they could talk afterwards about, do you remember the time that I, the therapist, realized that the perfect interventions aren't always the best? Sometimes yeah. it's better to be the human doing the mistakes and doing some, something uh, stupid. Uh, I really like that. It, it's a good example of um, that mistakes, a lot of mistakes do not lead to something good. Um, but some do, and, and, and the, we cannot be that afraid of doing them because it, sometimes it, it's good to show that you are vulnerable and you are human and you are not perfect because that's the truth. That's a beautiful story, really, because I could imagine again this therapist beating themselves up for uh, being spontaneous or or impulsive or whatever and being reactive rather than responsive and then the client seeing that she's human and uh, and that normalizes uh, that and and they share a common humanity i love that example what a beautiful example guys i'm just going to tell you with if you're if you are uh if you are watching this or even if you're not um uh, please, you know, if you have questions, if you have comments, we'd love to interact with you. Uh, it, it is not, it's just not, it's not just Elin and me in a bar. Uh, if people come over and talk to us, we would love to talk to you. Uh, and here's one from Barbara. Oh, our sweet Barbara, uh, also from Sweden saying, I once started crying during a session. I had a really caught a rough morning and when the client said something nice to me i started to cry like a child oh sweet barbara and i would say the same thing as i said to elin who fell asleep it you know sounds like you needed a little cry and sometimes right we we ourselves feel that the timing is a little bit off I would wonder what happened uh, in that in that situation, Barbara. I could I could share one that uh, I, I'll share one of my own. But before I do that, I I'll, I have another one which is pretty horrible. So, Barbara, this is not what you did. But I wanted to share like, so when I, this is traumatic, right? So when I was, uh, when I was little, I lost my grandparents and my mom, uh, you know, was, we were, we were all suffering from this trauma, right? And, and my mom was, uh, she felt like she was broken. And this like, this is so many years ago. So this was before it was natural to offer help. And so my mom, she lost both her parents in, in horrible circumstances. And she went to her doctor and said, I, I need, I need help. And she was then sent to a, uh, I believe this person was a psychiatrist. And so what, so this, again, I was, I was small, but I just, my mom told me that she went to see a psychiatrist. She told, uh, the, the, the doctor, uh, or the therapist about her loss and he completely lost it. Like he just, mm -hmm. he just broke down and he had to call his secretary, who was also his wife, who had to come in and soothe him and comfort him. And my mom was just there like, I'm the, I'm the patient here or I'm the client. And I know that she left and she said, I'm never going to see a psychologist or a, a psychiatrist again. And then when I wanted to be a psychologist, she was like, no, because they are horrible people. And, and you know, so this is, a, this, it kind of touches upon something that is, um, that has been in our story. Uh, and, and so knowing you, Barbara, uh, I would say that crying, I would just say to all of us cry because if you know me, you know, I cry a lot in different settings. And I think it's not that you cry, but more like how you cry or the way that you cry. And I think there are ways where we can uh, be very touched by what our clients tell us and we can be very moved and we can show that sometimes through tears, sometimes not. And there are times where we absolutely lose ourselves and, and it's more about us than about uh, the client. And I think that is, um, that is like that is can be hard when that happens i would oh i would want to i want to give you a hug barbara and i wanted to know what happened um and and how you dealt with that because i i see that since you write it here it's probably something that was hard for you um have you been in that situation Eileen, where you where you felt like um overwhelmed by emotions definitely definitely yeah. or oh, I had a lot of tears <laughs> during yeah. sessions and, and 
and and I think it's and it's something that comes naturally for me as well. And I need to to think about it as so it, it's not focus on me because I think it's okay to cry if it yeah. happens. It happens. But what what do I do with it? And how yeah. can I do my best to to shift the focus away from me? And back to the client because yeah. that your your story, Ricky, that your mother, uh, it, it sounds awful to be in that place, and this person couldn't uh, pick himself up and, and change change the, the focus, focus or perspective, the focus yeah. where it should yeah. be, because we can lose it, uh, and maybe we should say, I I need five minutes. Let's mm. take a break. Let let's just uh, take a break, and I will be back, and then change the focus again i think it's okay i think clients can take it as long as we pick it up afterwards and, and we we uh, make sure that we have the focus on on them again so we we shift the focus but yes i've been i've been um crying i, I think i've all and i think it's okay I, I, and i met a lot of other professionals that are really afraid of it afraid to cry afraid to to even just get a little teared up and I think it's okay to take a napkin for yourself, uh, as long as you continue to 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 have the focus on on the client. Uh, so so that's actually something that that I don't see as a mistake. But of course, if I lose it totally, that, then um, I hope I have the the some way to to get back. To, to maybe take the, the a break and, and then get back to, to focusing on the client and then take uh, responsibility for, for you are here and, and this is your time. But I think it's okay to be emotional and we should uh, try to show it and also be able to have the focus on the client. I love, I love that you're um, saying that. I, I, I really agree. And I think it's not... It's not like if you cry easily, you know, you can cry. <laughs> so it's more like how you, again, the way you cry and, and where you have your focus. I've had one client said to me, oh, I'm sorry I made you cry. And I was like, you did not make me cry. I got sad. Like I experienced sadness from hearing what it is that you're telling me. So I totally just spoke about the sadness I was experiencing and using that as a way to model acceptance of the sadness I was sitting there with. And this is also where sometimes when, when I, this is particularly comes up in supervision when people are talking to me about like crying and not crying and how to show that. I think that although we preach in, in ACT, we talk about uh, acceptance and like avoidance as is something is a bad thing. And I think like sometimes I need to practice a little avoidance because if I, you know, go all in this, um, I would probably be so busy <laughs> handling myself that I couldn't be there for the client. So I think it's a delicate balance between sometimes leaning forward and sometimes leaning back in your own emotions because in, in the service of being there for your client. And I think that that is a skill that I think like when people master it, that's so beautiful. Uh, and then sometimes we lose ourselves and, and you know, give ourselves a break. And again, maybe with Barbara's comment, maybe this client also saw that, that Barbara is human uh, and that we suffer as well. And it could be a beautiful thing. One of, one of the things that I often talk about when I talk about mistakes is, uh, and this is one where I, where I have made, you know, failed miserably many times is when we, when we, when we don't practice what we preach. And one of the examples I will often give, um, and you know, if people, if you've been to my workshops, you probably heard this a hundred times because I share it a lot, but, um, many years ago when I was at psychology partners, um, I saw a client who was suicidal and who had written a suicide note for her children. And when she read that, Elin, I just, uh, I just lost it. Like I was like, I have suicide in my family. Uh, so it triggered a lot. Uh, I couldn't, I, 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 I wouldn't say that to, to the client, but it was there. There's no way it, it cannot be there. Uh, I was, I, I was fairly new. And so what, what happened with me, I was like, what do I say? What do I do? Uh, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my license. She's what if she dies? What about her? Chip? Like, I was just like mm -hmm. overwhelmed by that. And then I started doing what I do best. 
And I, so I started talking and teaching, actually. And so I just read uh, Kirk uh, Strassel and John Child's book on uh, suicidal treatment and assessment. And so I got up at the whiteboard uh, and talked about the suicidality statistics in the US. And here we are in Sweden, right? And I, I was just like giving a lecture. And, and, and if you saw it, you'd probably say that's a you know pretty uh, correct lecture. Um, but of, of, obviously it was absolutely out of context and I was only doing it because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't stand being in my own skin. And the cool, it's not a cool, this is not cool, but, but now it's cool to think about it. But what I did was I, I talked to her about acceptance. So I was telling her that she should accept while at the same time I was modeling and demonstrating uh, avoidance. I was telling her to step back from her thoughts while I was like absolutely uh, torn up in my own. I was telling her to be present while I was like eight years old and wor and worrying about my future uh, and her future and, and the future of her children. I was telling her to show compassion for herself and I was beating myself. I was literally, while I was speaking to her, I was like banging in my own head saying I'm the worst therapist and human ever. I was telling her to connect with her values while at the same time I was so distant from my values and I was telling her to put her feet in the direction of what was important while I was like literally being uh, the version of myself that I didn't want to be. And so this was, it's very shameful and, 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 and hurtful to share. Um, and what I learned from it was, because then after that, I didn't see her for another, I think two weeks and I quit my job. And fortunately the good people at psychology departments didn't let me go. They were like, well, <laughs> you, you can quit when you fix this, but you, before you do that, you can't quit. Uh, but um, what happened for like, so for two weeks, I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. I was just a mess and I was very ashamed. But what I got to think about is like, what kind of therapist do I want to be? Like what kind of, I thought about what kind of mother I want to be and partner and et cetera. And it turns out they're all the same values, but it got me thinking, what would I like to be about in that room? Like when I work with people, what kind of therapist? And so, oh, this was, and so when she came, and one of the things I found to be so important is to not talk about act, but to model act, to show, to show my show, don't tell, like to show my clients the diff, like the, to, to help, to model it for, for my clients. Mm -hmm. And so when she came back, I apologized to her and I, I was so not, not just crying. I was sobbing. Um, and I, and I got through the session modeling act uh, and this is where it turned for us like she 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 was on board and uh she started to see the processes and experience the processes rather than have a lecture but this is like one of my like if you woke me up in the middle of the night and said what is the most stupid thing that you've done mm -hmm. as a th oh, there are many right lisa coin said this as well like why well, ask people what are what is one of your mistakes and she said can i only name one <laughs> She has like an entire, <laughs> an entire volume. Um, but this is one of my biggest mistakes. And it is also one of the greatest learning opportunities because mm -hmm. it really got me thinking about what kind of therapist I want to be. And I remember telling her, like, I, I, I know for a fact that I will be scared again and then I will be insecure and I, and I won't know what to say. But, but I also promise you this. I will sit with you. Like I will sit with you in the darkness. I will not go away. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, it, it didn't feel beautiful at the time, but now it feels a beautiful way to work on your values and the kind of therapist you want to be and be explicit about that to your client. Oh, so that's what I'm oh. just gonna. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Rike, for sharing that. And I, I have a question. Yes, Is it okay please. To you please, like, go in the bar. It? Nobody, nobody's yeah. watching. I because I wonder, could you have done anything else in that first situation? Was it because you are human too, though uh, know a lot about act? But is it possible 
to be the best therapist and sit with you, you was it possible for you that there in the first first when you got this uh, all over you and you felt everything you felt what would it have is it even an option for you in that situation if you haven't thought about it if you haven't planned for it or yeah like trained it could you do it so, I, I love uh, this question and and, and so I, I I and I think it's it I just wanted to thank you for that because I know it comes from a place of like compassion and 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 uh, and caring for me, and so I would say I think I could uh, because I did just two weeks after. But the reason I did was because I spent two weeks uh, going through this. So in that moment, I probably couldn't have. And the thing is that it was such a slap in my face um and uh, and so again i have com- now i have compassion for myself now i can i can sometimes for a second see what what you're getting at like you you couldn't have you know you did the best you could under the circumstances <laughs> and and i think another important thing that you're talking about i was lacking the skill that like i it's not that i i didn't want to help it was not that i i you know made an effort to be an idiot i lacked a skill and being in a situation where that was obvious taught me that this is something i need to work on so i just wanted to thank you for that and i think it's again it's very compassionate place that coming from um and so i th- and i think this speaks to what you know the whole purpose that i know that both you and i are so passionate about tonight and i know why you wanted to write this book is that you know, we do the best that we can, and then we learn, from, and then we 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 mess up, we make a mistake, and then we learn from it. Like, if I came out of that session and went, oh well, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, that would have been much worse, right? But I was, I I wanted to do better, and I wanted to uh to calibrate uh to calibrate the situation. And so, yeah, just want to thank you for that. Uh, yeah, because I, I think it's a good, so such a good example of of uh, uh, this that, that that we 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 want to be um, present and and uh, be a good model in in letting the the feelings uh, be there, and 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 I can be here with my mind and everything, but that it is difficult otherwise it wouldn't be something that that that, that um is uh, on our mind all the time and, and as it exactly. makes it, it difficult for us and makes problems for us uh, but we also want to be able to handle that not be overwhelmed by our thoughts and feelings and this exactly. it, it is difficult and sometimes we need to feel more and sometimes less and it's only in the 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 result what, what what the client uh, thinks about it what happens that's where we see if this was the right way to do or or, or not and we need to take care of our, ourselves also and in this I, I hear that you you did what you 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 put your place yourself in a place where you could be in this and mm-hmm. and that made you stay but you realized that you wanted to be somewhere else and you yeah. needed two weeks of beating yourself up. Maybe you could have done it in another way. I don't know, but you did that and you came back and you showed that what you wanted to be as a therapist. You you did a great job. Oh, thank you and, so and much it's for just, saying it's that. Just, just hoping that, that because I, what something I learned writing this book and, and doing all the interviews is that I, I, I realized that most of my mistakes that I made, I have no idea that I did. I, I don't know yeah. about them. Because yeah. no one told me. Maybe I said something hurtful to a client that I didn't realize was hurtful. Uh, the client said, "No, I don't need any more time because I, I feel good now and, and everything is good. Uh, we we don't need to 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 have the next session." And and they drop away. And uh, I think, oh, it was a good therapy, and the, the client hate me maybe yeah. i don't know if this is uh, true but i guess that a lot of our mistakes we don't never get to know that we made so every time we realize that we did a mistake or uh, the client tells us that 
this didn't feel good for me. This is something that, that I'm, you hurt me. Uh, to be open, it, this is scary and, and, and really, really hard to be open, to, to take that and to, to listen to that and, and, and be in that place where I say, okay, I really need to understand this and I want to do this, that we do together do this as, as uh, to something good uh, and we work through it together. Um, th- that's hard. But uh, because we do things that will get not as we like all the time. Exactly. And I think that I think you're spot on, Elin, when saying that many of the mistakes we make, we don't even know them because we're like we're, we, de- we never receive that feedback. One of the things I think about when so this is this is one I talk a lot about a lot because uh, because it was very uh, it's very shameful and it's, you know, I think many people can relate to it as well. But one of the things I, I did do when, when then when I had this follow up session, I said to this client, so I noticed that I, the last while sobbing, I said, I noticed the last time you were here, you were reading that letter to your children. And I just felt and I told her about all my experiences. And I also said to her, and when that showed up, I found myself at the whiteboard giving you a lecture. And clearly that was not helpful. So what I did was a functional analysis of my own behavior and then I asked her like, what, what shows up for you normally? And what do you do when that shows up? And, and how do you find that helpful? And then I said, like, I talked to her about how I want to be with my clients and I asked her, how would you like to be in here? So I came back to basically back to basics, uh, what you and me have been taught all these years at Psychology Bartons to do a functional analysis of the, of, of the client and our own behavior. And and I I I don't think I would have been able to do that um, if I hadn't <laughs> done that horrible thing that I'm telling myself that I did the last time. So I think I just wanted to thank you again for that beautiful um, perspective on this. That um, that we are often you know we are we are doing our best and 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 we come from a good in- intention and sometimes the function may not be exactly what we want and and sometimes we miss this. Uh, miss this. I wanted to say that um, here's one from Miriam, our good Swedish, uh, good Swedish friend, saying that another mistake is being so excited to try a new. T- I'm, I'm laughing because this is I so relatable. Being excited to try out a new technique tool and then realizing I've done it more out of my own enthusiasm than <laughs> was actually best for the client at the moment. I love this. I have found myself. Uh, where the clients are like, wait, 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 I'm on a bus at my own funeral uh, (laughs) with a monkey on my shoulder in quicksand. uh, (laughs) And, you know, all of all of the in a hole. (laughs) Like you are just digging, digging, digging. (laughs) the whole digging. And there's there's also a parrot and uh, and uh, I am singing milk, milk, milk at the same time. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And I think that is, uh, have you tried that healing, like being a little uh, maybe overly excited and then yeah. using all or, the techniques? Or, or when, when you, you hear yourself starting the same metaphor or the same, same uh, um, exercise for like the 10th time in a row with all the clients. And, and for someone, maybe the first one was, yeah, this is good. And, and something happens. And then you start to use it all the time, all the time, all the time. And it's like, the function is all away. You, you, you haven't <laughs> done the functional analysis about, is this uh, functional in this setting with this client? Yeah, and we have actually good examples of it in here as well. Someone that really gets caught up in an act uh, act exercise, throwing papers at a client, yeah. doesn't understand it at all. And this is filmed because it was uh, um, during a psychotherapy study. So, so they had uh, supervision with the film material and it was actually someone in the supervisee group that said, can you, can you just rewind and, and can you look at the client instead of you? Because they were so happy. Oh, it was such a good exercise and everything I was let throw throwing every shit. There, <laughs> yeah, and just look at the client. And what you see oh. is client just sitting there smiling watching a little okay not understanding at all what's happening and and it's such a a good example because 
that is something we probably done millions of times without oh, yeah. knowing because yeah. I felt good. This was a good exercise for me. <laughs> I yeah. really nailed it. Yeah. But what did how? Uh, and you're not supposed to talk about the exercises in, in the act. You're supposed to live it. But if it's not livable, you don't. You cannot. It it doesn't happen anything, and it, it's difficult to know sometimes. Many times you know also, but but sometimes it's difficult. I think this is uh, in a way it's hilarious. I'm so I'm, my heart goes out to this. Uh, thank you and uh, thank you to your colleague for sharing this with us. Uh, and and again, like this happens so much to us. And I think this is where I, I this is uh, where it teaches us to. Uh, we, I get that a lot in trainings. People say, "How much should I explain the exercise?" And I was like, "Don't explain it. Uh, experience it." But and ask the client like. What was this like? Like, what did you notice here? Like, uh, what did you learn from this? What did you take away from this? And I think that if you're, if you're, if our great colleague uh, had asked that question, maybe they would have, uh, you know, stepped out of their own. But I just wanted to say, like, it's so relatable. You're on fire. You're doing, you're doing a great job. It feels so good for yourself. And then you, like, what a beautiful thing it is that this was filmed uh, and that somebody caught that uh, mm -hmm. and again I think this really reminds us to check in with the client whether it, this was workable for them or relevant for them or or you mm -hmm. know whatever their experience was mm -hmm. one of the one of the things so, so I when I do this uh, uh, when I have my workshop or talk about mistakes I, I the last one I'm gonna reveal it like the last one which I think is one of the worst uh, well I, we, I want to be careful because now we're starting to put them in hierarchy and saying one is better than the other or work, you know, but one of, one of the things that I see ourselves doing, which I think is a great mistake, is beating ourselves up as therapists, um, telling ourselves that we're not good enough, that we're not smart enough, that we're not clever enough, that we're not efficient enough, that we're not perfect enough. Um, so I think that is one of the things that, that breaks my heart uh, is that we come out, and I, I love that you said earlier, Elin, that um, sometimes we, we don't know if we make mistakes and sometimes uh, sometimes we're on a roll and, and it, it, it wasn't helpful. And sometimes we're like, oh my God, I just messed up big time. And the client's like, well, thank you for being human. <laughs> so so what works is true here, right? Like, you know, if it, if it, whatever we're doing, if it works, it's true, obviously. But so there are sometimes there's, there's this like checking in whether the function of what we did was what we did was helpful or not. But I think so often, uh, we are beating ourselves up, um, in ways that our client, like the client is not beating us up in that way. Like some, okay, sometimes we, they don't like us and then we're too much or we're boring or whatever it is. But I think that like, if there's one thing I've seen across therapists from all over the world in all these years is like how we beat ourselves up. Do you recognize this in, in the people Def that you serve and in yourself? Yeah, but definitely, definitely the, we, we do. And, 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 <sighs> And, and actually, when, when we should doubt ourselves a little and, and maybe not beat ourselves up, but of course be a little on the edge to see what was happening and, and, and to, to it's something good in that, but also to, to, to let it go. I, I think you had one of the, one of the, the persons writing comments said that, that I learned to, to focus on other things. That's a good yeah. thing. I think we need to notice this wasn't my best session or that maybe that wasn't that good, but what we need to, to, to do more is to, to check in with clients. How was yeah. this for you? Did, did you react on anything? Is it anything in our contact that, that, I love the Swedish word skaver. I don't know what you should say in, in English. Mm. That it's something that doesn't feel really right. This is something mm. that's rubbing you wrong. Uh, mm. So we, we should make it possible for clients to be able to, to put words on what might be a mistake for them. Because one behavior for, from me uh, can be the best behavior for this client, but the worst behavior for this client. So, so we should make it possible, but yes, we should also be good to, and, and this is why I wrote this book. 
we do the mistakes. I'm not alone with it. It's a lot of us doing it. And and as long as we recognize that and we mm. try our best to to handle them and to uh, apologize or make th- make things right again and to to mend it together with the client, it's it's all right. It's all right. And I, and I think so. You're like you're saying so many clever things. One of the things that I just wanted to amplify is that I I, th- I think I heard you talk about like if we can create an environment. It, first of all, if we're like more like contextually con- contextually sensitive, right? Uh, being sensitive to the thing I just did was not working there, and it's working here, and then it's working here, but it's not there, etc. Be be sensitive to context. And another thing is that if we can create an environment where clients will tell us that this was not helpful, or you crossed the line, or I felt unheard, or I felt rejected, um, that I I for me, that would be one of the most beautiful things if I had created an environment where the client felt safe to share that with me. And I just wanted to to say that I heard that inside of you. I know this is how you work as well when you when you supervise and teach people. And I just wanted to amplify that, uh, that I know that you are working in a way that where you are helping your clients give you feedback and where you hold space for that, re- regardless of what the feedback is. Mm-hmm. Elin, what would you say like, so again, like we we may or may not have done a mistake. We did something and we maybe we don't know yet whether it was a mistake. And we're beating ourselves off for being crappy therapists, crappy humans. What would you tell, like if, if we could offer people a warm blanket of alien, <laughs> what, what talk would you tell to, us? To, yeah, speak to someone, speak to talk. Talk to your colleagues. Talk to someone that that you trust, and because sharing this, don't don't put it in in. The worst thing is to just be in your head, beating yourself up. Talk to someone. Uh, it's shameful. It, it might feel a lot of shame, and 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 uh, it it might be really really difficult. But do it, and please start talking to each other about the small things. Because if you have a client, uh, a colleague that you can, or or a supervisor, or or uh, someone else, uh, another professional that you can um, speak to about the small little mistake, little mistake, little mistake, little mistake, little mistake, little mistake. Little mistake, little mistake. Well. Isn't this ironic? In the final part of this webinar talking about mistakes, suddenly the sound went crazy and started looping ill in saying little mistakes, little mistakes, little mistakes, little mistakes. So we had to cut this part out of the final version of this webinar. So thank you, Elin, for being a part of this. Thank you for allowing us a space where we can talk about what is difficult and talk about what we can learn from these mistakes. Thank you for watching this webinar. Thank you for being a part of this community. And thank you for showing up with authenticity and bravery for these cocktails and courageous conversations. Wishing you all the best from my heart to your heart. Thank you for the difference that you are making in this world.